Hi everybody, my name is Demir Karaman. I'm former six-time national Latin champion of Bosnia and also owner of Eurorhythm Dance Studio. I've been asked by Education Department of World Dance Council to produce and present a lecture uh, today and the name of the lecture is Quantum Dancing, Spiritual Approach to Authentic Self-Expression. So I will tell you a little bit more about my personal experience as well with the dancing. I started relatively late, I was 18 years old and my body was already formed uh, by that point, most of it at least. And uh, so um, challenges that I've experienced with the dancing, maybe some other people didn't have to go through that, those who, especially those who started uh, at early uh, stage. Uh, I'm the person also who loved challenge and then dancing was definitely something that gave me everything that I could handle and more than that. So um, uh, basically that's the reason why I stuck with it because I couldn't quite put my equation to it um, soon in the process. So 26 years later, I think I got a little bit better, but there is a long ways to go still about it. What I can definitely tell is that becoming a great dancer is not an easy thing to do. And for every growth-oriented uh, individual, uh, regardless if a dancer or not, we will always strive to, uh, you know, to bring our best game. So um, since I started late as 18 years old uh, and I felt off balance quite often, um, there was no physically really obvious reason why is that happening. So I realized that there is more to, it, uh, to great dancing that, that really meets the eye. Um, and then when I met two of my teachers who clearly defined um, energetic and then muscular structure, uh, I got some light bulb slashing in my head and I realized, okay, there is actually a chance that I can get hang of it and actually do something with it because uh, finally I felt there are certain things, uh, there is a guideline for me where to go to understand this on, on a little bit deeper level. Before we go in the depth of the lecture, let's first of all um, understand meaning of those words, including authentic, self-expression, self and then quantum as well. So I'm just gonna read as dictionary says, and uh, so authentic, synonymous, uh, real, genuine, true, and the meaning of the word is having an origin supported by unquestionable evidence. Uh, share the sense of actuality and lack of falsehood or misrepresentation or undisputed origin and not a copy. As far as expression, um, definition is process of making known one's thoughts of feeling or feelings or the look on someone's face that conveys a particular emotion uh, as well as the act of saying what you think or showing how you feel by using words or actions. And then we have quantum, which is defined as the smallest bit of something that can possibly exist. Plural of quantum would be quanta, and quanta are pockets of this subatomic energy, which includes waves and particles, mass and non-mass, matter and non-matter, it is measurable and immeasurable, real and not real, visible and not visible, physical and non-physical, it is completely, under quotation sign, opposite, all at the same time inherently dualistic, contrary to the current laws of physics. Quantum world creates physical world and mind communicates directly with quanta. Quantum dancing is a method and attempt to bring awareness to those less obvious factors that impact our balance performance and then by bringing awareness to those factors, uh, that's going to help us on a personal level, uh, on a human level, it's going to help our dancing and dance partnership as well. So those hidden factors that, uh, that are less obvious include our um, language or words that we are using, uh, emotions, um, our uh, personality, as well as our thoughts. Before we explain each of those uh, hidden or less obvious factors individually, we will explore belief behind uh, um, ancient Chinese philosophies, Taoism and I Ching or Yi Jing, and uh, that are dealing with the concept of oneness, uh, as well as uh, yin and yang energies and their impact on, uh, on humanity. Uh, we will also explore co concept of yin and yang as a driving force behind those factors. Um, and in addition to that, we will explore based on uh, belief of those uh, um, ancient Chinese philosophies, what does that mean to be a real human being. Taoism is one of the great philosophies of China, three philosophies of China, uh, with uh, Confucianism and uh, Buddhism as well. It can be translated as a path or a way. Um, the, be, according to Tao, everything that exists is of one piece. Everything that exists is also uh, meaningfully interrelated 
and there is an energy chi that flows through everything. Um, so it encompasses all material and non-material phenomena in creation as well. So there is many aspects in life uh, that are actually very uh, interrelated that we don't necessarily associate one with another also according to Taoism. Qi is intangible, invisible, but very powerful energy that flows through everything, flows through everything in the universe. Uh, it encompasses all material and non-material phenomena in creation, and it's universal state that, that exists everywhere. Uh, qi is a result of the interaction between uh, two opposing but complementary forms of energy, and those are yang, which is a, ultimate, uh, a great ultimate energy, and uh, yin, which is ultimate nothingness. Yang we know as a, a masculine energy, and uh, yin we know as a feminine energy. Um, quality of qi is determined by balance of those two energies. And then quality of chi reflects also our thoughts, emotion, and personality as well. I Ching, or Yi Ching as we pronounce it, or Yi Jing as they pronounce it in China, is uh, essentially study of change. And uh, by change, what uh, we really mean is transformation of yin to yang, or yang to yin uh, energies. It deals with concept of the yin and yang energies, their interactions, and their impact on humanity. Um, I Ching see a uh, value of every human being to experience both of those states, yang state and then yin state as well. Um, as defined by I Ching, real human being is balanced uh, combination of those two levels of experience. The aim of I Ching is really to help us become a real human being of balanced combination of those two levels of experience, and which, would, which would make that we are fully awake human being capable of exercising free will. Yin and Yang energies are not precisely defined, but at most basic level, Yin corresponds with female passive energy and uh, flexibility, and Yang corresponds with uh, uh, aggressive masculine energy and firmness of will. Characteristic of each of those energies would be, and I'm just going to go ahead and read them, we have uh, Heaven on Yang side, so first one word that I'm going to say is going to be Yang, and then uh, second one is going to be Yin. So we have Heaven, we have Earth, we have Masculine, we have Feminine, we have Activity, Passivity, Movement, stillness, heat, cold, exterior, interior, outward, inward, up, down, full energy, hidden potential energy, light, dark, warmth, coldness, dryness, wetness, aggression, yielding, odd numbers, even numbers, uh, summer, winter, youth, old age, increase, decrease, and we have left brain, we have right brain. So as you see, they are very opposite and at the same time very complementary. Based on quality of a chi that flows through our body, we can be uh, in one of the following states. We can be predominantly yang, we can be predominantly yin, or we can be real human being, which is balanced combination of those two levels of experience. Most of us are either in predominantly yang or predominantly uh, yin uh, uh, state. Uh, we are extension of that predominant energy and we also take attributes and manifestation of that energy in the physical reality. As a re result of that, we are off balance in a certain direction. Our strengths are a result of that predominant energy, so are our weaknesses. As long as we are off balance, we are unable to exercise fully free will or also have true authentic self-expression. So language. Um, some words are balancing us, some words are disbalancing us. So if we take, for example, predominant young person, uh, that person is already off balance over the front of the foot. So any words such as uh, push, go, lean forward, are gonna serve to further disbalance them and move them even uh, more forward. So their chances of really experiencing standing leg and producing necessary action on that leg before they uh, move forward are greatly diminished. Instead, we should use words that have a lasting effect and uh, don't really end, such as extend your foot into the floor or something that has present continuous um, quality in them. Different emotions, they are gonna affect us differently, but we will definitely feel their influence. Eagerness, for example, it's gonna put us over the front of the foot because we are ready, we are ready to compete. Um, also desire as well, desire to be better than someone, it's always gonna put us over the front of the foot as well. Fear, on the other hand, is going to put us mostly over the back of the foot. We're going to be hesitant and uh, Chan Wing Wei is going to be um, challenging. Our personality is a re reflection of the chi that's flowing through our body. So uh, basically, we can have a predominant yang state and predominant yin state. So in a predominant yang state, we are going to be uh, off balanced over the front of the foot. 
so uh, basically personality is gonna be jittery full energy aggressive um, very uh, active restless um, something like that so when that uh, uh, personality is exposed to the stress induced situation such as competition they're gonna find comfort in increased activity so they're gonna try to move even more if we have predominantly yin state uh, what is natural for them is going to be hesitation yielding uh, passivity in that sense and where they find comfort in stress induced situations such as competition is exactly in that and being less active however solution for them is exactly exactly opposite so if you're a person who prefer to move and that's your personality then you should actually find the stillness and if you're a person who like prefer stillness then you gotta get going our thoughts as well are extension of predominant energy and as such they are gonna be adding into that off balance state that we are uh, in. So let's say, for example, for predominant, if we talk about predominant uh, yang state, um, they, we are dealing with the full energy. So all thoughts that we're gonna be formed, they're gonna be about going somewhere. So if you have movement of the physical body that is already going somewhere, and our thoughts are about going somewhere, then you have two forces that are moving in the same direction, which is gonna increase our off balance state. So there is really no counter force to balance that body. So what I would suggest uh, for uh, someone in uh, such a state is that their thought has to go in opposite direction that movement of the physical body. So if you are moving forward, everything in your thought process has to be about moving backward. So what can we do about it? So who we are being is really what we bring every way into our relationships, into our dealings with others, uh, family, friends, uh, work, everywhere, literally. And of course, into our dancing and our dance partnership. As long as, as we are uh, off balance as a result of being, of being in one of those predominant states, we cannot be truly authentic. Uh, in order for us to enable this authentic mode, we have to go through the process of transformation, which if we are predominantly yang, transforming yang to yin energy or yin into the yang energy. We call this process integration of self with capital S. So let's talk about integration of self. So we are going to be, our starting point is going to be who we all are, which is basically we are all human beings. So there is two parts to the human being. There is one that is very obvious, physical or form. And there is another part that is less obvious, which is energetic or formless. Uh, also, uh, nature of uh, living in physical reality, if we want to uh, go somewhere, we have to take an action. So we have to basically take a steps. So characteristic of living here is doing. And then in an uh, energetic dimension, we are here and there at the same time. So there is absolutely no need to take an action. Um, also, in a physical reality, there is clearly defined border uh, between each of us. So there is you, there is me, there is house, floor. So everything represents some type of separate entity. While in an um, energetic dimension, we are all made of one thing. So there is a unity. So our goal really through transformation of yin to yang and yang to yin uh, is um, basically to unite what has been separated and then to become by uh, I Ching a real human being. By uniting those um, uh, two parts of us, uh, we are going to change our perception of the time, matter and space. So let's explore a little bit concept of time. Um, I will use analogy of the dancing and so if we have let's say 100 different dancers and we give them same piece of music and then same steps to do we are gonna notice a big difference how they do those uh, steps so we will see that some of them have plenty of time to do everything what they want to some of them are hardly making it some of them feel that music is way too fast and then some of them can even have a coffee in one hand and produce everything uh, what they really want to do of course there is a difference in their skill level uh, but also their relationship with the time is more importantly different as well. So uh, based on their relationship with the time, we can uh, look at um, external concept of time and internal concept of time. In external concept of time, we look at time as something that is outside of ourself. Time is moving in linear fashion. We have past behind us, we have present moment and we have a future that is ahead of us. So we are subjected to that time and there is absolutely nothing that we can do about it. In internal concept of the time, which is actually that it being mode, I am the time and time is me. Since there is no separation and time is not something that I'm looking at uh, outside of myself, pretty much I can speed myself up anytime that I want to or I can slow myself down anytime uh, that I want to. As far as a present moment, that's also something that is very relative. It has multiple layers of depth and it can be 
extended indefinitely because I am the present moment and it's not something that's outside of myself. Time is then in dancing is represented by music and then um, external concept of time uh, basically um, we look at the music as something that is outside of ourself that moves in very linear fashion and that we are subjected to it and there is really nothing that we can do about it. Uh, we tell ourselves also follow the music which uh, underlying truth in that statement is that we are already behind because to follow means to be behind. Um, so our chances of being musical are greatly diminished if we try to follow the music. At our early stages of our dance career we look at the music as an enemy who doesn't really let us to express because it's either too fast or too slow and we engage some type of struggle with the music. Internal concept of time, uh, basically um, I am the music and music is me, so there is absolutely no separation. Uh, since I am the music, I can slow myself down and speed myself up any time that I, that I want to. I am also present moment and I have multiple layers of the depth. So time can be extended indefinitely. If we really practice this concept long enough, we can physically uh, feel and hear how music is distorting to the such a slow level that allow us to produce pretty much anything that we want to. Now we are going to explore the concept of the matter. So we can also look at the matter as something external, which basically means everything and everybody is uh, separated and clearly defined. So um, I don't have a physical root and uh, because of that I'm separate from the flow. Since I'm separated from the flow, I'm dancing on the flow and any time that I move, I'm subjected to the current laws of physics incur uh, including momentum or inertia. So pretty much anything that I do, I'm very much bound by laws of physics. Internal concept of the matter also says I am the floor and the floor is me. Since there is no separation, I'm also in the flow. So I have those energetic roots. I cannot, anytime uh, soon, I'm not going to grow physical roots, but I have energetic roots that basically I can take with me wherever I go. When we think about concept of the matter and how does it really show up on a competitive dance floor, one thing that we are gonna, uh, that's going to be great uh, reference is what's happening with our feet on the dance floor. So we've been always told when I look at your feet I know exactly how much you know about your dancing. So what does that really mean? Anytime when we look at a dancer who uh, once when they place their foot, that foot is moving off the spot, we know that they are driven by external concept of the matter because there is no connecting spot, there is no root under that foot and that's why that foot have luxury of the movement in that sense. Uh, if you see great dancing, what you will notice that they can move full out without hesitation whatsoever and yet somehow that foot stay on that spot, exact spot where they placed it. So you know that that particular dancer uh, look at the uh, um, matter from internal concept and they are the floor. There is absolutely no separation between them and the floor. If we look at also concept of the space, um, I am from the being dim uh, dimension, I am space and space is me. So there is no separation. Since I am space and space is me, I exist there and here at the same time. Basically, I exist everywhere simultaneously. Nature of my movement is multi-dimensional duality. So we have a vertical dimension, we have a depth and we have a, a width. And so we move in all of those directions simultaneously and pretty much in anything in between as well. Usually on competitive dance law, uh, the way to recognize concept of the space is dancers who lack patience are generally going to lack concept of the space. What does that really mean? They're going to be over committed to in one direction and move a lot more in a linear fashion. So what's going to happen? Transitions are going to be very difficult and rough. Also movement is going to be too linear. So there is not going to be enough volume in their dancing because they are over committed in one direction. So uh, vertical dimension is also going to be something that's going to be lacking. So their head is going to be a little bit more forward in the partner space. Uh, awareness of the width as a concept and that really part, uh, uh, space where partner has to fit and is also going to be lacking. So let's, let's explore a little bit how does becoming a real hu human being affect our partnership. As Mr. Miyagi in Karate Kid says, everything in nature is looking for its balance. Based on the quality of a chi that flows through our body, we can form and attract different partners. So um, we can basically say that there are three phases of partnership that we can create that way. Phase one would be codependence, phase two would be independence, and phase three would be synergy. Phase one of the partnership uh, is described as a codependence. Mathematically, it's one plus one is equal one, which doesn't make any sense. 
So what is happening here is basically if we have predominantly young person, uh, that person is going to attract predominantly yin person. So together they're going to create whole or one. So we have yang plus yin equal yin yang. So in that phase of partnership, we are basically attracting someone who is exactly opposite than we are. So together, uh, it represents our missing half, essentially. So together, we are going to create one person. So it's excellent learning opportunity for us because what we are missing individually is right in front of our eyes. So if we really want to work on ourselves to become a whole, we just basically have to learn as much as we possibly can about that person that is, uh, that is next to us. How does this relationship uh, basically look like in a dating, for example? In a dating, usually we are playing hard to get who is going to call whom first. And all what we are trying to do unconsciously is basically to get other person off balance so they become predictable. And then uh, we have upper hand in the relationship so we feel safe because there is something that is missing. And it's all about our survival, really. So the relationship is based on survival and a need. Um, so as far as dance partnership, we have a lot of physicality. We have a lot of balance loss because of an error and we don't know better at that particular time and we struggle a lot in communication. Phase two of the partnership is described as independence. Mathematically saying it's one plus one is equal two. So you have two partners. Each of them is whole and the two holes basically create two holes, right? So um, it start, this phase starts with transformation and balancing. So this is internal process when we uh, transfer our, uh, transform our predominant energy into its opposite. So if we have predominantly yang person, we have to transform it into yin. And then predominantly yin have to transform it into the yang. So what we are really essentially doing, we are building our missing half. So in this particular phase, we are going to focus uh, on our weaknesses as a building block. And we are trying to raise weaknesses to the level of our strength. So basically, as Pocahontas says, you have to walk footsteps of the stranger to learn the truth you never uh, knew. So what is characteristic of this uh, phase is it's extremely uncomfortable because what we really want to do and what we need to do is essentially very opposite. So we want to continue to be mover if we are mover and we want to continue to be stillness if we are stillness. But to balance ourselves and give ourselves a chance to really exercise free will and have authentic self-expression, we have to do exactly opposite. So as far as dance partnership in this phase, what we see, we have one individual who is whole on their own. We have another individual whole on their own. So when they dance together, everybody do their thing, but uh, there is not more to that than that. So uh, their ability to relate beyond that is lacking. With this phase, we are becoming capable of exercising free will and we set foundation for authentic self-expression. Phase three of the partnership is defined as a synergy. And mathematically speaking, it's one plus one is equal or greater than four or five, and it can go all the way to infinity. In this particular phase of partnership, two people dancing together are producing a lot more than each of them could individually. So it's built on independence as a, uh, as a, as a foundation. And to independence, we had two building blocks, which is trust and vulnerability. So basically we have two people dancing together who trust themselves so they don't have a problem putting himself in another person's hand. So they can go off balance by choice to uh, basically increase the impact and produce a lot more magic in their dancing. So in this particular phase we see couples who are fully expressed, capable of free will and they literally, they can change their performance from round to round, from dance to dance and if you look at them in quarter final, semi final, final, you might be witnessing completely different performance. They were authentic, they are in line with the music and they can pretty much respond and change into whatever they want to on a, on a spot. It is um, rarely seen, but when it's seen, it's really something that we remember for the rest of our life. I think each of us can uh, remember five or six moments and we says, this was just outstanding and I I'm so happy that I actually witnessed that. And we can recall them pretty quickly um, into, uh, into our memory. In conclusion of this lecture, what we really intended to is to help those younger generation of dancers not to go through the same problems, if possible, that we had to go through. So our goal is to give you opportunity and chance to reach your ultimate potential where you are fully, authentically self-expressed in record time. So when you work on your opposites, when you work on your weaknesses, it might not feel that way. Uh, it might feel like you're going backward and you might lose the next competition. Your long-term goal is a lot more important and if you really go through it voluntarily, you're going to find out that your ultimate goal is going to be reached in a much shorter period of time than if you don't. 
Furthermore, if you want to achieve greatness, you don't have a choice. You have to go through the process of transformation and balancing if you want to be authentic, if you want to have a choice uh, in expressing what you are uh, intending to. Um, I will just invite you to imagine the world when you are dancing on a dance floor and you feel that any given point in time you can do and produce anything that you want and that your partner can simultaneously respond to it without any hesitation. So from round to round you can dance differently and literally do what music is suggesting and then be one with the music and produce the magic that all the rest of us are just gonna look, witness and talk in years to come just about that particular moment and how it enriched our life. Not only in the dancing but also in everything else that you do you're gonna experience joy as a balanced individual who is really not feeling under the pressure to, to uh, keep going in a certain direction your um, relationships are gonna get richer you're gonna really truly find joy in the process of learning and it's gonna be something that's just inseparable from you you are going to be the process of learning and on the daily life it's gonna be filled with a moment of the joy and happiness and um, uh, basically good communication rather than struggle and something uh, uh, lo uh, longing for something that is way ahead um, if your everyday life is uh, like that I'll tell you something even if you get expressed 99% you're gonna be happy with it because quality of life that you had that led you to that point um, is gonna be some something that is priceless and um, something that you're not gonna regret uh, period what are we going to explore uh, in continuation of this lecture in the Quantum Dancing 2 is going to be how to basically apply all of this uh, knowledge in competition situation. Because what happened in competition situation, there is this desire that we really perform well and there is the fear that we are not going to. And uh, what happened basically we uh, close ourselves in a self-reinforced uh, cycle of the desire and the fear because desire is rooted in fear as well that literally threaten to consume us so we, uh, most more often than not we actually uh, end up not performing the way how we would want to just because we don't recognize a uh, cycle that we are in so our approach in uh, quantum dancing 2 is going to be to help us understand how not to step into that cycle and also what to do uh, if we uh, end up in it at this time I am going to give you a few practical advices how to use this information for teaching purposes. As we promised in the beginning of this lecture, we are also going to give you some practical advice that's going to make your practice and dancing a little bit more efficient as well as more enjoyable. Unfortunately, there is a lot of blame going in today's dancing and I guess that was always the case. So it was, it's always someone else's fault why things are not working and not ours, of course. Um, a tip of this lecture is basically to bring a different angle and this is also a tool that's going to help dancers and teachers to diagnose what's going on uh, better and sometimes that what's going on might not necessarily be, uh, be physical by origin. Information in this lecture should also uh, help you to recognize where are you at in a, in a uh, stage of evolution in relationship to the real human being. It also should help you better understand yourself and um, it should help you identify the gap between where are you at right now and where would you like to uh, be or who you are today and who you would like to uh, become. Uh, also how we go about that gap is going to make the difference uh, in uh, quality of our practicing. If we make a judgment on ourselves and say you know what it's all bad, this is all not working then that's obviously not going to work for us. But if we just look at that something, okay, this is where I am at today, and this is where I need to go, and what are the actions that I have to take, then in that particular case, um, definitely it should work um, well for uh, uh, us. Uh, this understanding also should, should uh, empower you to um, live life at 100% responsibility, which means that you take ownership of everything that is working in your life and also things that are missing or it's not working. It should also help you look at your partner as a partner as a perfect match with all of their imperfection and vice versa. Finally, it should inspire you to take and embrace the journey that is ahead of you and then uh, if you really uh, bring this spiritual development along with your physical development then you might be able to achieve something that not many before you have done. I want also to point out that this particular approach and method is not replacement for a physically, physical component of what physically you have to do. Even though things are going to be uh, 
feeling a lot easier to do still uh, what you have to do with physical body you have to continue to work on that as far as what what is that that you would um, give as advice to uh, the dance teachers is definitely when you're working with a couples consider that um, what are they facing or problem problem that they have in their dancing it might not be necessarily physical uh, by origin so it might be caused by some non-physical factor the way how you're gonna know it is because problem that you're trying to solve persists uh, or uh, take some a different form but definitely solution is uh, not uh, evident so if that's the case very likely then a problem is uh, having a non-physical uh, cause in that sense we hope that this uh, lecture brings some clarity to you we bring you more enjoyable uh, journey and uh, there is a lot more that we that we want to say and um, we are planning to do it in quantum dancing 2 that's going to be coming uh, soon until then keep dancing enjoy and i hope that your journey from this point on is better than up to this point all the best the following videos are example how to practice concept of time space and matter and we hope that you find them helpful so we are here with two professional dancers, Anja and Christian, and they're going to help us demonstrate really yin and yang perspective and how does it, uh, how does it look like when we combine those two uh, uh, energies in dancing. Uh, naturally, Christian wants to go full, full power, total masculine guy who wants to go for it. And Anja, she likes to do everything very soft and feminine. So that's their natural style and we're going to ask them to show us that but also we're going to show us all different combinations where we're going to ask them to uh, perform different roles so we ask christian to be masculine and feminine and i the same and all combination between those two so first thing that we are going to ask them to do is show us really youthful masculine perspective and we'll ask both of them to dance with a full masculine energy at this time So at this time, we're going to ask both of them to take feminine approach to it and really go with feminine energy. And we'll switch it around again. This time, we're going to ask Anya to dance masculine and we're going to ask Christian to dance feminine role. So at this time we're going to have Christian doing masculine and Anya doing feminine. So for two of them, for Anya, it feels very natural to go feminine and she is very expressive uh, a lady. And for Christian, like I said earlier, it feels very natural to go masculine, go hard, go as hard as you possibly can and be the top dog on the floor. So what we ask them to do is really to go in exact opposite. So we ask Christian to, to uh, dance out of the com his comfort zone uh, to dance very feminine and Anya also to dance very masculine. Um, so how does it feel to you guys too, when you take that approach? Uh, to me, it's challenging because I'm used to doing all the masculine stuff. But uh, it's very interesting how my body can dance actually when I can use the feminine energy. Very good. How about you, Anya? Um, I like different styles of dancing. I do prefer maybe the feminine side, but uh, I can feel comfortable in the other one too. <laughs> <laughs> So we are going to ask Anya and Christian also to help us demonstrate concept of the time and we are going to ask them to dance uh, from external concept of time uh, and internal concept of time, treating music like something outside of themselves or treating music as a part of themselves. So first we are going to ask them to show us external concept of time when they treat music as something that is really outside of themselves. <laughs>
Now we are going to show an uh, aspect of the matter or concept of the matter and what does it look like when we are dancing on the floor versus when we are when we are the floor and actually we are in the floor and have those energetic roots and take them with us wherever we go. Um, so we're going to show uh, both of those concepts. So I'm going to ask Anya and Christian to uh, help us actually uh, create a quite a difference. So at this particular time, what am I going to ask you to do is to dance on the floor. So uh, show obviously what is happening in depth, what is happening in a width, but vertical dimension, uh, let's completely take it out of the equation. Okay, very good. So it's very shallow. So at this time, uh, I will ask Anya and Christian uh, to basically dance to be the floor and dance in the floor. So we're going to include this vertical dimension and basically concept of oneness. So we're going to uh, uh, see a lot more depth in the dancing. So go for it, guys. When we talk about concept of the space, we want to distinguish six different lines that are happening simultaneously in a perfect synchronicity. So we have a line that goes down into the floor and that's always starting point. We have also opposition to it that goes upward. We have something that's happening to the left, we have something that's happening to the right. And we also have something that's happening forward and back. Anytime when there is some movement on the body, those lines are going to react in a certain way. So this particular concept is similar to the concept that was uh, shown last year through the, uh, through the spinal engine lecture that basically involves muscle cycle that involves lower doses, side bending and a torque. So anytime when we have something in one direction there is something that is working in opposition. So goal is to have our brain being able to really control all six directions simultaneously. Uh, in a case that one of those uh, aspects is missing, it's going to feel like there is an energetic hole uh, on, on that particular side. So if I don't feel one opposition, there is a part of that that is missing. Some of those uh, um, movements are important for us to really move. Some of them open space for the partner. Some of them allow transition. So pretty much we have to find linear aspect in everything and also aspect of the circle all six directions uh, simultaneously. So what are we going to show is concept of the space and how when we start moving, how certain uh, uh, areas really disappear. So we lose awareness which causes us to be off balance and, uh, and have lack of control of the movement. So basically uh, we're going to ask Christian to move the same way like we uh, saw that samba movement before in very masculine fashion and then we will see how certain aspects of space are lacking and that vertical dimension doesn't necessarily, is not necessarily as present as it should be. So at this time what we are going to do, we are going to provide balancing force that's going to go in opposite direction. So we're going to have awareness a little bit more of what's happening on the back of the head and that vertical is going to be uh, a little bit more obvious, which is going to allow better control of the movement and it's going to give us a chance to add something to it so we are not another victim of momentum. So I'm allow you to do that. So we have already established vertical dimension and depth and this time we're going to get a little bit more width. So I'm going to ask Anya and Christian also to uh, do that again and show how does it look like when we have all three dimensions pretty much in place. When we further explore, explore concept of the space, um, basically, um, in my mind, I never travel. So generally, the physical body moves, it's always in transition. So in my mind, I'm on one leg and one leg only. So basically, if I just do it in regular backwards, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Oh, now I'm there. How did I get there? I have no idea. But in my mind, even while I'm traveling, I'm committed to the leg that I'm coming from as long as possible. So like I said, I never travel. 